Greetings! Well, today we're going to go over the neuromuscular junction and we're going to relate it to the muscular system. Keep in mind, of course, that this model, we refer to it as the neuromuscular junction model because there's an interaction between a motor neuron and a muscle fiber. So this whole structure here is the muscle fiber. This is the motor neuron. The junction, it's right here between the motor neuron and the muscle fiber. All right. So this relates, the information I'm about to go over relates to the activity two in your laboratory. Now, when you look at the connective tissue surrounding this muscle fiber, we have to understand that this connective tissue is referred to as endomysium or endomysium. So this whole area, that's the connective tissue that wraps all of the individual myofibrils located within the sarcoplasm of this cell, which is the muscle fiber, all right? Now, the sarcolemma is actually the plasma membrane of the muscle fiber. So all of this is the sarcolemma seen here as well, okay? All right. Uh, now, this model represents a, a muscle fiber for skeletal muscle. So one of the unique characteristics that makes skeletal muscle different from other muscle tissues is that it is multinucleated, and you can see a nucleus here, 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 and here. Uh, you can also see one over here on the other model, okay? Now, the myofibrils are located within the sarcoplasm of the muscle fiber, all right? So each one is a myofibril. Now, within the myofibrils are these tiny little contractile units. This is the functional unit of muscle, which are the, this area here. So from each little black line that you see here, so from here to here to the next black line, that whole area, this whole section, that's actually the contractile unit that is a sarcomere. So as you can see, there are many sarcomeres inside the sarcoplasm of a muscle fiber. Now, when contraction occurs, you see the pink area here in the center, that is representing the myosin. So the myosin heads within this area here interact with the lighter area, which is representing part of the, part of the um, actin filaments located in the light area here. Now these areas, the pink area and the lighter pink areas are are referred to, are representing these things called bands, okay? And so the distance between the myosin, so the length of the myosin bands, my, myosin myofilaments that are here, that we refer to as the A-band. And the lighter portion, which is right here, okay, that area right there where the straw is, where the end of my straw is, and you can see it throughout here, that is called, this whole area here, that is called the I-bands. So this area is called, are called the A-bands, and this area here are called the I-bands. Now, upon contraction, because the myosin then interacts with the actin filaments, because calcium has been, has removed the blocking, the regulatory proteins uh, that are blocking that interaction, then and only then will the I-bands disappear upon contraction, but the A-bands will not change in length. Just keep that in mind. So one more time, Connective tissue wrapping is the endomysium or endomysium. These are the myofibrils. This is the motor neuron here, motor neuron. Neuromuscular junction because we have a motor neuron and a muscle fiber interacting and the junction is right here. This is where the synaptic cleft is at. And I believe that's just about all we have to go over in this video. I hope you it is, it is useful to you and you uh, enjoy your studying. Bye-bye.